Good morning. How are you today? My name is Praise for Wowe once again. Thank you so much for joining PF Things. Um, this is episode 29. Whoa. So we are almost getting into our first month of um, PF Things and we've done the show every 3 a.m. Um, thank you so much for always joining us. Well, today's session is going to be very short. Right. Um, so I want to play a game. Now that was a game I played many years ago and it was a game that changed a whole lot of things for me. I believe this game will change a whole lot of things in you and about you. Now, what are we going to do? How does this game work? Now, um, I realized a couple of years ago that um, SA, you're welcome. You're always the first to arrive. Thank you so much. You're on top way. Um, you know, thank you so much for joining. And Kate, how are you? Right. So I was saying that let's play a game. Right. John, good to see you. Right. Um, I realized, I, Lawrence, how are you? I realized that, um, you know, the news, the quality of what you expose yourself to, your brain to, will determine a whole lot about you. So I found out many years ago how to shift um, from, how to switch my country, um, the news I received into the news from a different country that I wanted to think like. So for example, I'm a Nigerian, but I can be in Nigeria and switch all my social handles um, in a way that I will not receive what is trending in Nigeria. I will receive what is trending in my adopted country. So I adopted a first world country because I wanted to develop a first world thinking. Right? So many years ago, I adopted Japan. So I studied everything about Japan. I was receiving news about Japan. I was thinking about Japan. Right? And I realized that it changed my mood. It changed my mental wellness. It affected everything about me um, that I did no longer receive news about everything that was happening in Nigeria. You know, because, for example, if you go on Twitter right now, I, I, I'm, I have not checked um, Twitter Nigeria. I can almost bet that many of the things that is trending on Twitter Nigeria are things that um, you don't want to associate with, are things that cannot power your wellness, are things that cannot lead you to where you want to go. Right. Um, so if you check, sometimes way back, um, I realized, for example, there was a week I turned my Twitter handle to um, UAE. So I wanted to find out what was happening in UAE, you know, and that was the week um, that the king of Dubai talked about. They were going to build a, um, a nest in Mars by the year 21, um, 17 or 21, 18 or something like that. I think it was 21, 18. I think that was the year 2018. Right. That was the same week in Nigeria that a Nigerian senator was singing a Jekuiya Nuje, a Jekuiya Nuje. No, how was I supposed to get inspired by what that guy was talking about when someone else was thinking about dominating mass? That a lot of us, <laughs> Sati, good to see you. Auntie, Shala, thank you. A lot of us are not aware that there are other nations of the world who are not bogged down by what we are bogged down by in Nigeria. We are not aware that as our children are home, for example, right, that some other nations, their educational system is on, their children are in school. There is a tendency as a Nigerian to be comfortable when you compare yourself with Ghana and Burkina Faso that you lose touch with the reality and with the fact that there are other nations of the world, hey, babe, what's up, you know, that have moved on. It's almost as if it's a Left Behind series. I mean, if you have followed Left Behind series, it's almost as if rapture has taken place in some other nations and some other nations have been left behind. So take, for instance, if COVID never subsides, right? Let's say for the next two years we are home. It means a typical child in Nigeria would have lost two years of academic work, right? Meanwhile, other nations of the world were prepared they, so we have become like five foolish virgins, five foolish virgins, while they have become like the five wise virgins. They prepared ahead of time. You know, they, they overcame things like um, internet breakdown. I can be doing this um, broadcast right now and internet will disappear. They've overcome things like power outage. Uh, I mean, uh, unknown to many Nigerians, there are some nations of the world that the children are not aware that there's a possibility that power can be taken. They are not aware at all. As in, they don't know that it exists, that 
power can be taken, right? That if you live in your house, I mean, think of nations that can correctly predict the weather for one year, right? They don't use word of knowledge. They have developed the technology to correctly predict what weather will look like. The day is going to rain. The day is not going to rain. The day there is going to be a storm. They are able to warn you not to go out, right? Compare that with a country that you, you are not even sure what is being said. You are not sure where you are going. You are not sure what can happen tomorrow. You are looking at leadership and there are leaders that when they are talking, you are writing down. I remember every time Obama spoke, I had things to jot down, right? But just just suppose that with other nations in leadership where even when the leader is putting his best, you don't even understand what he's saying, right? So we're going to play a game. I played this game years ago. It changed my life. The challenge I find is even an average Nigeria who has left for other country, they struggle to integrate because they are still bogged down by the news in Nigeria. So they keep listening to the news in Nigeria. They keep following people in Nigeria. Their friends are still Nigerians. Even though they are in a different nation, they struggle to integrate. So they're still eating Nigerian food in whatever nation they are. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that, you see, when it comes to energy and vibration, right, you vibrate in the direction of where you want to go, not where you're coming from. If you're going to be vibrating where you're coming from, it would have been better for you to stay where you're coming from. Right. So the game we're going to play is very simple. One, you are going to adopt a first world country. You're going to adopt any country of your choice. So let's assume you have the power to choose the country where you were born into. <laughs> As the network just went up. Right. You're going to choose a nation of your choice. Adopt one first world country. One. Two, you are going to focus on the news and their life for the next one month right or let's say start with one week so you are going to adjust your twitter handle to ensure that you only receive as we are going to see you news from that country right um number three you are going to try to study their thinking and you are going to model it right this is to save your life you must first save yourself right don't i mean uh, i think john it was john i was telling me how do we save nigeria i said john shut up right go and save your personal economy first Forget about how to save Nigeria now because you first need to save yourself, right? And so understand their thinking and model it. So you're going to choose the country, right? You're going to pretend that that's your new country. You are going to focus on their news and their life. <laughs> you are going to understand, seek to understand their thinking and model it. Four, you are going to find out their health tips and model it. Find out what they eat, how come they're able to live long. Um, what is their health lifestyle like? You are going to model it, right? You're going to find their attitude towards value and money and model it. You're going to find out their attitude towards value and money and you're going to model it, right? Do you understand the game? That's the game you're going to play. Bear like and see you. Now, many years ago, I adopted Japan as my country. I studied Japan as if my life depended on Japan. I knew everything about Japan. That was when I discovered that Japan had national values, right? They had the national value that is taught from home. The educational system is built on it. They knew, they asked ask the question, who do we want a typical Japanese child to become? That was the question that gave back to their educational system, right? So it was very, very clear, right, how to the kind of subject to create, the kind of curriculum to create that can deliver a predictable outcome, right? So if you see the educational system of Japan, it's totally different from the rest of the world. Now, if you see the educational system of Nigeria, you want to ask yourself, what was going through our mind when the curriculum we created was created? And who is that curriculum capable of producing? It would dawn on you almost immediately that our curriculum is straight Lord made to produce a generation that cannot think. A generation that cannot think cannot innovate. How do you get into school? And your lecturer comes to say, first class is for me. A is for me. Uh, A is for God. B is for me. C is for brilliant students. You know, average students should set from day one in class. He has, he has no respect for your ability, for your intelligence. Your faith is already sealed. And no system can checkmate him. Right? Now, how can you argue with that lecturer? How can you disagree with him? I remember I wanted to do my master's. You know, and I went for the exam, entrance exam in a particular university, and I was already hearing that you cannot ask questions. You, if you ask questions, you may not graduate. And I'm like, hey, I endured the torture of first degree 
that lecturers will not allow you to ask questions. And I'm going to take this. No, I'm not going to do it. Right? So you realize that there are, there are nations where the lecturers are excited when you are asking questions. In fact, they are worried when you are not asking questions. But in some other parts of the world, the lecturers think of themselves as God. You must worship them. You cannot ask questions or else you will not graduate. Right. So let me tell you what I found out. I realized that when I studied Japan, Japan had national core values in their country. Number one, every Japanese child is supposed to think of others, right? It's a national value. Japan thinking of others, one. Number two, value in Japan is doing your best. It's a national value that is taught from home to school to the society. Every Japanese believe in doing your best. If you check the way their football team plays, they will run you ragged. They may lose the match, but you can be sure they are going to give their best. Number three, Japanese believes in not giving up. They believe in not giving up. They will fight you till the last drop of their blood. Number four, Japanese believe in respecting elders. Japanese believe in respecting elders. Number five, every Japanese child is expected to know their role. You are expected to know your role. Every Japanese child is supposed to know their role. And number six, every Japanese child is supposed to work in a group, right? You never work alone, which is why if you hire a Japanese, he's going to recommend his brother to you, no matter what. He's going to recommend his brother to you. I found my brother, I can do the job also. He's going to bring his brother to you, right? Now, that's a nation with national values. I've always asked this question. What is the national vision of Nigeria? Nigeria does not have a vision. What are the national values of Nigeria? We don't have national values. If you ask 36 governors, what is the vision of Nigeria? They're going to give you 36 visions. If you ask all the head of state, what is the vision of Nigeria? They're going to give you different ones, right? So if you check the, our behavior, it's almost as if corruption is a national value, right? We can't deny it finds expression from religion to um, corporate Nigeria. Corruption finds expression easily, right? So it's almost as if it's a norm to be corrupt. It's a norm to offer bribe from police to, I mean, it's almost like if it's a norm, right? Meanwhile, there are nations where you can't bribe anybody. So if Japanese have a clear national value and you are in a nation that has no clear national value, it means you are already endangered, right? So that's why we're going to play that game, right? You are going to assume that you are going to adopt a new nation, a first world country, must be a first world country. You are going to focus on their news and life too. You are going to understand their thinking and model it. Four, you are going to find out their health tips and model it. Number five, you're going to find out their attitude towards value and money and model it, right? I also have studied the Japanese culture. I've studied the Jewish culture. I've studied um, the Emirati culture. I have studied the German culture. I've studied, um, I've studied the um, British monarchy system. I've studied all kinds of culture, right? I mean, I, I studied these nations to an extent, to the extent that I could sing their national anthem. In fact, if you sing their national anthem, you will find what they believe in. The Germans, for example, in their national anthem, they talked about German wine and German women, right? So imagine you go to Germany and you begin to preach about thou shalt not drink wine. That, drinking wine is a national culture in Germany. It's in their national anthem that the supremacy of German wine and German women is there, right? So you need to understand that there was a woman, Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison is the founder of, um, I mean, there's someone called Larry Ellison, I mean, the guy. He's the founder of Oracle. Larry Ellison says, my love affair with Israel as a citizen is not connected to religious sentiment. It's rather due to the innovative spirit of Israelis in the technology sector, right? Can you take that? My love affair with Israel as a citizen is not connected to religious sentiment but rather due to the innovative spirit of Israelis in the technology sector, right? That why are you connected to your own nation? That as an Israeli, I shared with you my encounter with a Jewish rabbi, right? That wherever the power God has placed in your hand will find expression in any nation of the world that you deploy it with wisdom in a way that it becomes indispensable to that nation, that nation will give way to you. That is what we read as wherever the source of your feet shall tread upon, you will have it as a possession and you remove your shoe and you begin to gyrate and match the ground and say, I possess the land. How many land have you possessed by gyrating, right? An average Israeli 
understand that that place had nothing to do with removing your shoe. That that place is saying, wherever the skill or the power that are placed in your hand shall find expression in any nation of the world, and where you deploy it with wisdom and grow it in a way that that skill becomes indispensable to that nation, that nation will answer to you. That's why an Israeli enters a nation with a skill as against enter entering with religion, right? So, how you play that game, you will understand that greater thought precedes greater works. Not confession alone. Greater thought. The biggest challenge you're going to have is your thought process. As it thinks in his heart, so he is. As it thinks in his heart, so he is. Greater thought precedes greater works. Not greater confession alone. Confession is good. Do confession. But your thought, how do you think, is what can power the work you do. Number two, until you step forward, the world never steps aside for you. Nigeria can condition you to begin a wallow in mediocrity. Don't fall for the standard in Nigeria. Nigerian standard is not a standard. So don't mess yourself up because you will find out that your excellence here is mediocrity elsewhere. So until you step forward, the world never steps aside for you. Equip yourself to be able to function in any nation of the world. Ensure that your standard is the standard that is obtainable in any nation of the world. That is what I benchmark. Number three, the first step to failure is expecting everyone to agree with your decision and innovation. The first step to failure is expecting everyone to agree with your decision and innovation. It's almost as if some of us have caught a covenant with mediocrity. You have caught a covenant with mediocrity. You want to be talking to a people who don't even understand that what you are saying is all wash, right? They will be clapping for your mediocrity because they don't know better. That your excellence is finding expression because of the mediocrity of the space you function in, right? Instead of going to test your metal, what I do, any innovation I have, I want to test it against Americans. I want to test it against British people. I want to test my metal against the best of the best. I will not settle for my culture because your culture is capable of dragging you down to the level of mediocrity that even though they are paying you, but you know that your excellence is mediocrity elsewhere, right? Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all the art that you cannot benchmark your space. Your space is too little, right? So when I hear people talk, about the world, you know, someone will say, Corona now, you know, we're just going to praise God and Corona will disappear. You can already know the smallness of his thinking. You can already know the lack of awareness. You can already know how, how, how shallow minded he is. So he feels that by praising God, God has low self-esteem. Once you dance to him, Corona will just disappear. He's not thinking of vaccine. Left to the black man, nothing will be innovated, right? Because we just want to dance and expect all our problems to disappear. Even when our dancing has not produced the result we seek. Now, there's a place for dancing, there's a place for dancing. It's a principle, but it's a principle of energy and vibration. We do not see it that way. We just think it's magical. Once we begin to dance, you know, miracle will just happen. Excuse me, where is that done in the in the past? Where is it in, in the Bible that people danced? And they won battles. It only happened once, right? That they danced. It happened once. And it was an instruction to David that dance and this will happen. The next time, right, they had to fight. There is no territory that was taken in the Bible without people going to war. They use gun. They use sword. They use arrow, right? But what we are made to understand here, people just want to say it and for it to happen without taxing their brain. You need to sweat your brain. So the first step towards Failure is expecting everyone to agree with your decision and innovation. People will not agree with you. You need to develop a thick skin. You need to learn to survive criticism. You need to learn to survive cynics. Everything I'm sharing every morning, people don't agree with me, but I am okay. I don't have a need to be liked. I don't, you don't have to like me, right? In fact, um, you know, once my wife, my children align with me, I'm fine, right? So if you expect to be liked, many of you want to be loved, you want to retain your shirt in the mediocrity team, right? So that people don't look at you and they'll call you names, even though plus you and the people you have expectation for your life, all of you are still mediocre, right? So you need to understand that the first step of failure is expecting everyone to agree with your decision and innovation. Number four, once what you are set to do is a service to humanity, there is no way it won't please God. Once what you want to do is a service to humanity, right? No religion, there is no way it won't please God, right? God is thinking about his people. And any product, any service that moves his people forward, right? God is interested in it. That's where you find God, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from God. 
Once what you are doing is good, you will find God there, right? Your fulfillment and ultimate financial fortune is tied to, for God so loved humanity that he sent your name with what? So can you put your name in that scripture that we love to read? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Yes, that's for Jesus. For God so loved humanity, he sent Bill Gates with Microsoft. For God so loved humanity, he sent Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. For God so loved humanity, he sent Steve Jobs with Apple, right? For God so loved humanity, right? He sent um, Warren Buffett with Berkshire, right? For God so loved humanity, put your name there. What have you been sent with, right? So if you check, for example, for God so loved humanity, he gave us Mark Zuckerberg, who produced Facebook, that whosoever uses Facebook, we no longer need to use Nipos, but now be able to talk to people across the world. It can fit into that scripture. Can you find your own expression in that scripture? Stop talking about Jesus alone. It's fine. Jesus has no self-esteem. He said, greater work shall you do. Many of us are not even doing the work. We are underutilizing ourselves underperforming we are i mean like an embarrassment to god but we want to run to heaven right so if you put yourself there for god so loved humanity that he gave zuriel or lawway to do what to bring what that whosoever use your product will not perish but have what maybe will own their essence you must find expression he said i have come in the volume of books to do thy will, O Lord, that whatever you are doing must be found in the volume of books. So if you put your name there, wherever it shows up, devote your entire life to it. Devote your entire life to it. Devote your entire life to it. The biggest problem is this. If you ask a typical Yoruba man, what makes you Yoruba? He doesn't know. He will give you some values. If you ask the next Yoruba man, he's going to give you different sets of values. If you ask 10 Igbos, you can try this. I have tried it. Ask 10 Igbos, what makes you Igbo? Give me five values of the Igbo race. They are go- the 10 of them will give you different values. If you ask ours, it's the same thing. Which means our culture is not documented. Our culture is assumed culture. In fact, our existence is assumption. Any culture that is not documented cannot see the light of the day. Which is why Ausa, I mean, Yoba and Igbo are one generation away from going into extinction. Because the first language you learned was your mother tongue, then you learned English. Your children are learning English, they don't understand their mother tongue. By the time they are going to get married and train their children, your mother tongue would have totally disappeared. It's because your mother tongue has not evolved. So we need to admit, which was what I did, I admitted that we don't exist right then i began to create a new culture that i can understand to become a new ancestor of a new generation you need to do that for yourself who knows maybe your family will be like the family of jacob that became a nation israel israel was somebody's family your family has the capacity to become a new nation so let's play that game let's pretend i'm interested in knowing the country you have chosen to adopt I'm interested to know what you're going to do with that country. Adopt a first world country. Focus on their news and their life. Understand their thinking and model it. Find out their L tips and model it. Find out their attitude towards value and money and model it. And let's see what becomes of you in exactly a month from now. You realize that your thinking will change. You realize that the news you want to hear will begin to change. I want to hear about innovation. I want to hear about creativity. I don't want to hear somebody pissed by the roadside. Uh, somebody was going and they, they, they put a helmet on him. And from the helmet, he became a, a rat or something. Or somebody touched somebody. His man would disappear. You know, all kinds of bullshit stories that doesn't make sense. You can't say this story in some nations of the world and they'll believe you, right? So those are the nation, the stories we love to hear. We are a gossipy kind of people, right? So you want to hear funny, funny things. As I was going, you know, somebody tried to pick one money. He became a goat, you know, uh, a goat slept with a... So when you see what we believe on our WhatsApp platform, the things that people spread around, you will understand why we are in trouble. You know, funny, funny things that doesn't even make sense, right? A, a goat slept with a dog. They produce a, a human being in Yanopaja. Nobody has seen it, though, but everybody believes it, right? That is not how to live your life. Guys, you are not getting younger. You, can't, you have to think about world domination, maybe tomorrow. I'll tell you what I've learned about the Indians and how they extend the frontiers of their nation everywhere they go. When an India leaves India, 
right? They are not living in India because they want to run away. They are living in India because they want to extend the frontiers of India to other nations, which is why Indians collaborate. In the U.S., I think Indians own all the donkey donuts that you find. They own it. They employ Americans, but they own it. It's the Indian agenda. If you check the national value of India, you will find the word they're called fraternity. The word fraternity is from the word confraternity. Confraternity is the word we use for cultism, that you cannot create a sustainable culture without cultism, right? Which is brotherhood, which is brotherliness, which is why the Indian gets into a nation, his community is going to give him a loan that is payable in seven years. That loan will set to him, we pay his school fees, he will pay back because, you know, if he doesn't pay back, it will affect the next India. Which is why they can go to Canada and take position and begin to buy up spaces. Go to UK, you will see Indians buying up spaces. Go to the US, you will see Indians buying up spaces. What do our own people do? They buy nothing. They, well, they buy something. They buy their own house, right? They buy cars and they show pictures. They don't collaborate to take over territories because it is not in us to collaborate to take over territories. Guys, we need to change our way. We have to become a new generation of people who can think of world domination because you cannot dominate alone. You must dominate as a group. The powers that created the world is us power. Come, let us, right? So if we cannot do it together, it's going to be tough. Why we can't do it together is because our values are not the same. The Indian already understand fraternity. So they know they have to do it together. So they collaborate to take over companies, collaborate to buy up streets. They tell themselves, they run. When they go, they are going to extend the frontiers of their, king, of their nation. When we go, we are running away. Right, and that's why even when we get there, we can't collaborate. The only time we collaborate is when we want to do a one bit. We need to change this culture, these beliefs, right? But it must start by you finding expression elsewhere, right? Because when you now find how things are done, for example, when I adopted Japan, I found out that there's a science for breathing. I found out that in Japan there's a place called Okinawa. That if you were born in Okinawa, guaranteed you will live up to the age of 85. Simply because of the environment and the air that they breathe and the serenity of their space, right? From Japan, I learned the power of meditation. I learned yoga. I learned a whole lot of things, right? I learned how they eat and why they live long. I learned how they think and the power of their curriculum. I learned how they do things Total quality management, right? I learned that in Japan, you are either... <laughs> you are, I said that this was going to be a short session, Ariel. I'm going to end now. I realized that in Japan, you are, there is nothing called minority. You are either Japanese or a foreigner. I realized that Japan has zero tolerance for foreign religion. So if you are bringing a foreign religion, they will monitor you, right? Because they don't want you to pollute their people. So it's a landlocked country, which is why every car that you called quality, is most likely from Japan, right? That's what differentiates them from China. China, you know, is substandard. Japan, you know, is the highest quality. You can take it to the bank. Guys, it's time to redefine our life. It's time to remodel our life. So let's play that game. It's called Let's Pretend. Listen to this over and over and over again, and I believe something will shift in you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'll see you tomorrow. Episode 30 is tomorrow. My name is Praise for Wowe. And I believe I'm getting you to think. This is PF Things every 3 a.m. I love you. Become a savior to the problem of the world. I'm a savior. You are a savior. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.